Hello, my name is Sasha Murphy. I go to Jamestown High School, and this is my project, The Effect of Wi-Fi Radiation Exposure on Sprout Growth. The rise of wireless technology within recent decades has led to an increased need for research on the effects of electromagnetic radiation on living organisms. Though normal doses of non-ionizing RF EMFs or radio frequency electromagnetic fields, like the amounts that humans are exposed to by having a Wi-Fi router as well as other basic electronic devices like iPhones, iPads, tablets, laptops, Bluetooth headphones, etc. in their homes generally do not pose imminent dangers, this form of radiation is not necessarily without consequences. In fact, a blanket of uncertainty still surrounds the question of what effects this type of radiation can have on living organisms. Research on this subject has yielded varied results so far. Some have found only a weak correlation between RF, EMF radiation from cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, etc. on organism health, while others have noted stunted growth in the case of certain plant species, damaged hair follicles in humans and animals, and a variety of other curious effects after study long-term exposure to RF EMFs. In this experiment, I exposed seeds of three different plant species to RF EMFs from a Wi-Fi router for a semi-prolonged period of time before sprouting them in jars. I then compared the growth of these seeds to seeds that had not to that of seeds that had not been exposed to radiation before being sprouted. Although this is a small scale project, I hope that it can potentially help to shed light on the consequences of ongoing EMF exposure on organism growth and in turn open the door to suggestions on what humans can do to reduce any adverse effects of this type of radiation while still enjoying the conveniences of modern day wireless technology. The main research question of this experiment is, will four days of close proximity to a Wi-Fi router damage seeds via RF EMFs and impact the extent to which they are able to grow? Um, my hypothesis or expected outcome is that if seeds are exposed to RF EMFs prior to being sprouted, then the extent and quality of their growth will be less than that of seeds of the same plant species that had not been exposed to radiation. My independent variable is the mass and visual appearance of sprouts or overall sprout growth. The de dependent variable is whether or not seeds were exposed to radiation emissions from a Wi-Fi router before being sprouted in jars. And constants include room temperature and amount of light that seeds were exposed to, quality and amount of water given to each jar of seeds, and, size, and the size of the jars that were used to sprout the seeds. To begin, I purchased three different types of seeds, namely Champion Radish, Cascadia Sugar Snap Pea Seeds, and Waltham Broccoli Seeds, and separated them into two groups, Group A and Group B, with each group containing one packet of each seed type. Group A seeds were then removed from their packets and placed on a paper plate, um, which was then placed on a table two inches away from a Wi-Fi router. Group B seeds were placed in a room away from the router. After four days, the Group A seeds were removed from the router and along with the Group B seeds were poured into individual quart-sized mason jars. Each jar was filled with cold tap water, placed on a shelf, and left to soak overnight or about eight hours. The water was then drained from the jars. From here, the seeds were gently rinsed with more cold tap water twice a day and drained again. Pictures were taken and qualitative, qualitative observations were made daily after the second rinsing. After four days of this rinsing and draining process, the sprouts from each of the six jars were gently removed and blotted with paper towels gently to remove ex excess moisture. The final masses of each group of sprouts in each jar were measured using a an electronic kitchen scale, and data and observations were analyzed. The radiation emitted by the Wi-Fi router did not pose any health risks, as I was not in close proximity to the router for any extended period of time. Therefore, no additional safety measures were necessary in this experiment. A table comparing the masses of each seed group after four days of sprouting is shown below. This same data is illustrated in the bar graph to the right, which can also be found on the project paper. 
the masses of the group B seeds all ended up being higher than the masses of the group A seeds. On average, the final masses of group B seeds were 14% higher than their group A counterparts. The radishes of group B had the greatest difference in mass from the group A sprouts of the same plant, followed by the broccoli and finally the peas. This likely was due to the natural germination speeds of each plant, as peas naturally take longer to germinate. In terms of qualitative data, a table showing final images taken of each plant is shown to the left. In essence, slight differences in color, cotyledon on size, etc. were present between groups A and B after four days of sprouting, but no significant discrepancies were observed in terms of visual appearance. The results of this experiment signify that perhaps exposure to RF EMFs damaged or killed cells within group A seeds, but did so in such a way that did not significantly impact physical appearance. The results were essentially right in the ballpark of similar but much more in-depth research that has been done in the past. Some scientific research has found that long-term RF EMF exposure can have adverse impacts on the health and growth of both plants and animals, like those listed here. Experiments like these observed stunted growth in plants in, and symptoms like muscle pain, nausea, and short-term memory loss in humans after they had been subject to regular long-term RF EMF exposure. Since the group A seeds in this experiment were only directly exposed to RF EMFs for four days though, it makes sense that similar but much less prominent results would be produced. That said, this experiment could have also been affected by unintentional or uncontrolled events. For example, levels of re radiation from electronic devices in nearby rooms, like iPhones or Bluetooth headphones, could have inadvertently had unintended effects on group B seeds during the beginning of the experiment, causing differences between the sprouts in groups A and B to be less significant than they would have been otherwise. Regardless, more in-depth research would, will help to clear up remaining uncertainties regarding the relationship between organism growth and radiation. The original hypothesis and research questions of this experiment are partly supported and answered through the project's results, specifically through its quantitative data as the masses of sprouts that were not exposed to Wi-Fi radiation were generally slightly higher than those that had been exposed. However, given the absence of significant visual differences between Group A and Group B seeds throughout the project, the most logical conclusion for these results is that the slight discrepancies in mass and appearance between the two seed groups are purely natural, that they were not explicitly caused by the presence or absence of Wi-Fi radiation exposure. Though quantitative results align with some past scientific research, Group A seeds were likely not exposed to RF EMFs for a long enough period of time for me to make a definitive verdict on whether or not Wi-Fi router radiation truly does stunt plant growth. Additional trials and further research, especially research involving more advanced equipment, will be necessary to make more definitive conclusions regarding RF EMF's effects on plant growth, but this experiment was useful because it could possibly raise awareness of all the, of, all of the unknowns um, surrounding radiation's impact on plants and organisms in general, and in turn promote future study of the subject. These are the references that I used in this experiment. And finally, I'd like to thank Mrs. Kristen Cosby of Jamestown High School for her continued support and guidance throughout the completion of this project. Thank you so much for listening.